November 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 John chapter 4 from the New Testament. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to determine if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses Jesus as the Christ, who has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and now is already in the world. You are from God, little children, and have conquered them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world's perspective and the world listens to them. We are from God. The person who knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been fathered by God and knows God. The person who does not love does not know God, because God is love. By this the love of God is revealed in us, that God has sent his one and only Son into the world, so that we may live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God so loved us, then we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God resides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this way, we know that we reside in God and he is in us in that he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God resides in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has in us. God is love, and the one who resides in love resides in God, and God resides in him. By this love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because just as Jesus is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears punishment has not been perfected in love. We love because he loved us first. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his fellow Christian, he is a liar. Because the one who does not love his fellow Christian, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And the commandment we have from him is this, that the one who loves God should love his fellow Christian too. God, part of knowing the difference between a spirit sent by you or of you and a spirit uh, of the devil or who's being controlled by the devil uh, is many things as John is talking about here and one of the things that we know is also discernment uh, understanding the knowledge uh, extracting information from your word and then also how to use it and I've been thinking a lot about this how do we use the word of God especially in being disciples and sharing your word your gospel with other people And I watch a lot of people, myself included, dilute your word to not scare other people. I'm just being honest, but we do that. We do that in church sermons. We do that by Christian books. We do that in the music. We do that in talking to other people. And there is so many amazing things about you to talk about. Things you've done in my life changes you've made in my life, uh, roads you've sent me down on, at times you've swooped in and, and saved me from so many things that I got into, the mess I created, you've gone in and, and saved me from those things. You've taught me lessons. There's so many things that I get to talk about that you've done in my life. But I think, and I could be wrong, but I think we are doing people a disservice by diluting the power and the strength and the honesty of what you've asked us to do. Yes, you very clearly do all of those things for us and then some. 
And I do know sharing that with other people is one of the best ways for them to start learning about the good news. But the life you have called us to is hard and difficult and a very, very thin road. The road is not wide. It's not something that everyone will be able to walk on. It is a hard path. And, and granted, you make it easier because you give us strength and you empower us. and You give us the desire to do what pleases you. And, and I also realize in, in sharing the gospel with other people, it's not like the first time we meet somebody, we tell them everything. We don't want to overwhelm them. But I think, I think we miss the mark in understanding that it's your timing and your choice having to do with that person's salvation. That I'm pretty sure, in fact, I'm absolutely sure that if I told them everything there was in the Bible and they freaked out, that still in your time and in your way, their salvation would come if that was your choice. Because you are sovereign. You are in charge of everything. Now, that discernment comes in from the, from the opportunity of reading a person, understanding where they're at, how much they can hear. It's not like you start off a kindergarten uh, child explaining to them uh, chemistry and biology and, and geometry, right? <laughs> we have to start somewhere with small steps. But once a person gets to that point of no longer being a child and you talk about this a lot in the bible about children needing milk you know they they need those comforting messages uh, the love of god they need to understand those things about you but then as they grow up uh, as they start to understand this path with you then they need meat they no longer need milk and one of the biggest things that you fuss about in the bible is people keep wanting milk they don't ever want to grow in that relationship and I think growing in that relationship also requires responsibility on the part of all people who are called to be disciples, to tell others about you. It is our responsibility to be clear about this hard path. I no longer want to dilute the message of you, God. Of course, with discernment, share it in the right way with, with new believers or people who aren't yet believers. But as people grow in your faith, I also want to be really clear with them. There is a path that you expect us to follow. There is a way of doing things. I just had a conversation with a friend. He's like, I really don't know what God wants me to do. Sorry, you're actually lying. <laughs> the Bible is very clear about what, what God expects you to do. You just don't want to do it because it's not your way. It's God's way. So there's a big difference there and I think we need to be really careful about not doing a disservice to people who are newer in their faith than people who have been in the faith a, a while to be really clear with them to be really frank with them to to be uh, frank with them when we explain what you expect of people when we show them those truths in the Bible that path you expect of us is impossible to walk by ourselves. It is impossible to do on our own. The only way we can walk that path is with you, God. And too often we're too independent or we want to be in control or we want to do it our way. Nope, the only way that we can continue that relationship and grow and walk down that path that you expect us to is with you. And with our hearts and our minds and, and our eyes wide open to what you expect. God, I do realize that if we told people the first couple times they were even hearing about you. That hard road that you expect us to walk. I do know that it would scare people from probably talking to us again. And that's where you expect us to have that discernment of what to say and what not to say. But God, I also just pray today for strength that as we get into those relationships, that we don't hold back the truth because we're fearful of what people will think. We have to remember that you're in charge and you're in charge of that person's salvation. And if they're part of your elect, you'll make sure that they are part of the elect. You'll make sure that they walk that path that you expect them to walk. You've promised as much in the Bible. 
allow us strength to not make discipleship about us. Provide us strength so that discipleship is all about you, God, and knowing that your sovereignty reigns. All you ask us to do is go and tell other people about you. In all honesty, not fearing about what people will think about us, not fearing what people will do with the information or how they'll react, but just knowing that you're fully in charge and you're in control. And as you say in John 15, 16, that you choose us. We don't choose you. That you are our Lord and our Savior, sovereign over everything. In your son's name, the true good news, I pray. Amen.